Mm-hmm. I mean, there are blocks of crack houses, blocks of houses that are completely decimated, whole blocks. You could probably buy an entire block with the money that is in your uh, under your seat in your car. I mm-hmm. mean, it is a mess. And I'm like, this is right here, uh, literally within a mile of the black excellence mecca that y'all like to talk about. But watch this. That's the thing I, I'm trying to figure out. And I, when I ask people this, it always gets it always gets shut down. Why aren't we buying these houses? Mm. If you're so upset that the gentrification, quote unquote, is happening, and you see um, uh, white women walking their dogs on Stone's <laughs> campus, or white women uh, jogging in their Lululemon around Morehouse, if you're upset about that, why don't you buy the houses? And the funny thing is I have a good friend of mine who works for a company that buys tax liens. And I, I challenged him. I said, why mm-hmm. are we not buying these houses? And he said, you know what? Let me check. He went and pulled up the sheet. He said, Jason, you will not believe how long this sheet is of houses that are in that area that are for sale. You won't believe how long this list is. And I'm like, what I don't believe is why we're not buying them. If you're so upset about gentrification and redlining and all these other things that you want to buzzwords that you want to say, why are you not buying the houses? It, all right. you got to do, your church could do it. Your sorority and fraternity or Masonic organization, your, um, your alumni association. Um, somebody could, you why could are you do, not doing it? You could what? do even a habit habitat for humanity. I bet you they, they fix them up one at a time. Uh, but a no, I want you to buy them because this is the thing. This is what got us all started on this. Morehouse this year decided they're going to build, they tore down two dorms mm. and they're building this, this new mega metropolis dorm. It's going to be like five years in the making. So mm. there's a lot of students that don't have housing this year. Mm. And so what ends up happening is a lot of these students are like renting, are, are, are not, they're not renting rooms, they're renting beds in houses. So people mm. are doing like an Airbnb, they're putting seven beds in that joint. And hmm. You get a bed, and you paying a thousand dollars for a bed. What, Bruh, It's crazy. So you already, I see it in your eyes. I see it in your eyes right now. You thinking, wait, if I got a house, if I got a house for thirty thousand, I put fifty thousand dollars into it. That's eighty thousand in, and if I could get seven grand a month, it ain't gonna take you. By the end of the school year, you'd almost paid the thing off. <laughs> one of my nephews is staying in one of them. Paying almost eleven hundred dollars for a bed, not the room, not a room, not four walls and a door and a closet, but a bed. And this is common. This is common. But I'm like, how are we in the alumni mom and dad's Facebook group belly aching and complaining and not calling people trying to buy these doggone houses? There's literally, I'm not even trying to be funny. There's hundreds of them in the the five mile radius of the AUC center. So instead of worrying me about twerking, instead <laughs> of worrying me about dumb stuff, how about y'all resolve this issue? Cause we're about to go down there for homecoming in two months and your kid is going to be paying a thousand dollars a month to somebody for you a know, bed. You know what, man? That I mean, so, that so beautifully encapsules encapsulates the 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 central argument and the central sentiment that I have when people always try to blame white people for black people's struggles, right? Yep. I say to them, I don't understand why you think it's white people's responsibility to improve your quality of life. I don't understand. I remember having this conversation on mm-hmm. Facebook with some guy that he, he kept talking, he kept complaining about the schools. And I said, you know, I said, let me ask you a fundamental question, brother. Whose responsibility is it to make sure that your child has the proper education? Oh, I want to hear this one. Uh, he hemmed and he hawed and he all of the, he, he had every excuse. And I said, brother, it's your responsibility. Come on now. It's your, I was like, I'm a grown man. If my kids are not properly educated, that's my fault. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do what I need to do to get my kids what they need to get. And I'm not looking to white people to do that. 
and 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 black people have not adopted this posture. I think we've yeah. abandoned that posture. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I think we've abandoned it. We used to take responsibility for our own right. issues. I like it. But now we've abandoned it. And again, I point back to um I, I I did a book review of the book. Um, it is called True Likenesses. It's a book by a um, photographer up in North Carolina, and it highlighted black people in the 30s. I'm like, who are these people? They're alien. They look alien compared to us today. Mm. And I'm like, no, they, 